Um, so the coaching changed his life, changed everything. That's a huge success story. Now, there's some there's some big lessons there. One of my favorite sayings is long obedience in the same direction. Most of the people that I'm coaching that are earning the highest incomes, I have been their coach for years. Not one year, not one month, not one day, not one speaking engagement, but literally year after year after year. They have almost mastered the systems that I teach. They could teach the systems, but they would tell you every year they've gotten better and better and they're breaking through those ceilings. So th those are some success stories that we've had. So out of all your students out there, and you got a whole bunch of them, what what's the number one thing that you would say that you found that, that, that people do, students do, to impede their success? My first thought when you said that is their their think is too small. They're thinking. They're they're they don't they think locally. They don't think globally. I remember being in Riviera Maya, Mexico in twenty twelve at the very first Ten X Growth Conference. It was with Grant Cardone, that's where I met Brad Lee. Where Grant's I met, a maniac. He's, he's awesome. a maniac. Yeah. And I was Grant had asked me to speak at that conference and I was sitting there talking about I'm gonna go back to Nashville and do this and do this and he and he just stopped me and said, Look, I need you to quit quit talking like that. And I'm like, What do you mean? Like he's like, Quit talking about Nashville. Quit talking about a local market. Your market is planet Earth. Okay? Now, I'm. I, this was X seven, eight years ago, right? So when he said it to me, I was like, he's right. Like, my market is not local. My market is the planet. And so many people think local. How do I do this locally? They don't think globally. They don't. So I came back and put all of my programs online. We began selling you know, nationally and internationally to people because of that statement he made to me. So a lot of people that I coach are thinking too small. That's they're, 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 they're playing too. They're playing too in a smaller way. They're fishing for blue gills versus for blue marlins. Yeah, and that, that completely resonates <laughs> because, you know, we've had my first company, PC Laptops, uh -huh. started out 30 years ago, right? And we grew it to nine stores and we're doing really good. We're doing like really good revenue. But I was like, really got, I got comfortable. You know, yeah. I'm like, hey, it's good. And yeah. I got a good team and we're making good money. Customers are happy. And that's when we started that the Zydex company right. online. It was crazy. Literally within just a couple of years, we did what we did in 30 years internationally. Mm -hmm. And then now that, you know, crazy. So that, that's a big one. Yeah. That's a, that's well, a you, met, you mentioned something. You know, I talk a lot about the concept called Prey Drive. P-R-E-Y-D-R-I-V-E. -E. Okay. Prey Drive is, is typically referred to in animals, specifically dogs. A dog has a Prey Drive. Okay. But as a, the, the more I study this concept of prey drive, it is an instinctual ability to see something either optically with the eyes or mentally with the mind mm -hmm. and go get it. In the dog world, it's it's see, capture, kill, prey, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the more I study this concept, the more I begin to believe humans have prey drive. Many times it has not been activated. Okay, so when you're telling me that story, you, you had it, you went out and got it, then you got comfortable. What suppresses prey drive is satisfied needs. Oh. Okay, if you study a dog, the, the, what, what I found fascinating is the reward for the dog chasing the prey is not actually catching the prey. It is the freedom to pursue the prey. The pursuit actually becomes the reward. Pursuit of prey. That's right. Reward. Not just catching it. So, so, so it's an internal thing. Like, man, I have the freedom and ability to go pursue something. Right? Well, humans are, are similar. I think there's activators of prey drive. Competition is an activator of prey drive. Fear of loss is an activator of prey drive. True. Inspir uh, being inspired by others, environment, exposure to something bigger is an activator of prey drive. So a lot of people become successful, and then because their needs are met, they become complacent. Yep. Or they become static. Been okay? there. <laughs> so, so think of energy as dynamic, static, uh, or entropic. Right, and I try to keep people in a dynamic state by constantly reactivating the prey drive. What do you do to reactivate that? I find I typically try to find out what is the key activator for you. So, so out of the ones I shared with you, what activates your prey drive the most? Is it competition? Is it fear of loss? Is it in, when you're inspired by other people? Is it an environment that you place yourself in? Is it exposure to a new concept? What do you think activates yours? For me, it's inspired by other people because sometimes we get a little cocky, you know, and we do really well. We're, oh, we're making millions of dollars, really cool. Yep. And then you sit down with somebody who's worth like six billion. Yep. And, 
That's exactly right. And and and, and I and I asked some of those guys like, okay, well, what yeah. you're still going crazy and doing right. And I'm like, yeah, I treat it every day like day one, man. That's right. And they're like, because really what you're saying, the pursuit of prey, that's right. It, it almost gives you this big endorphin rush. That's right. That and is that, the reward. Yeah. And if it's helping other people, yes. like that endorphin rush compounds. Yes. That, that's that been the big one. And this is like having you come on. Yeah. Like it, it, it's great because we give each other energy, that's right. man. That's right. And yes. then we want to do more. Yes. So we're like, man, like, that's right. these guys can do it. And it's not that hard. Well, and I think exposure, you know, like when me coming to your facility here and seeing how you're using it, like I'm very interested in having call centers. I'm very interested in, in uh, a building a concept called Greatness Factories which are these factories where we manufacture greatness, you know, in all walks of life, the body, the mind, the heart, and the spirit. So when I walk through, my mind is activated. That re activates my prey drive. If you got time, though, I'll show you some processes maybe that are goal that you could share and yeah. implement. Absolutely.